Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power the devil has. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry Walsh Live Worldwide. All right, what's going on, family? Welcome, welcome to Late Night with Jerry Rose Live Worldwide, starring Kimmy Kim from the Lacey Radio. This is here. This is right, hosting this fantastic seven-year podcast. That's right. Late Night. 700 episodes in seven years. That's right. Positive Power Double Excited. All right, yo, we got a very exciting guest tonight. Hogany Clark, she's a poet, author, speaker. This she's in the military. Kim and Kim going to get it all out of it. Stay tuned. We hope you enjoy yourself. Relax yourself. Get yourself some tea. Couple of, no, don't get no coffee. <laughs> she basically drinks coffee. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, happy New Year to everybody. All right, let's see what's up with Kim and Kim. On the radio. What's up, Kimmy Kim on the radio? What's up with you? You there, Kimmy Kim? All right, she 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 hasn't been on in a while. She probably forgot to unmute her her microphone. All right. Well, hold tight, Kimmy Kim. Let me see. It could, it could be on my end. Batman will check it out. So tell you what, let's hear another uh news broadcast from our good friend. Uh, Miss Nina, and we're going to find out what's going on with Kimmy Kim. All right, hold tight, everybody. Happy New Year. I'm Nina Taylor with this week's Gospel News. Todd Galbert is a gospel singer and worship leader originally from Rayford, North Carolina. He was raised up singing in the church. His first experience was as a worship leader while he was still in his mid-teens. He appeared in several theater productions after high school. In 2006, his self-released gospel album entitled Private Chambers. It was a set of original songs that he... All right, Kimmy, can we going to try it one more time? I, I think it was you. Can you hear me? Hmm, Kimmy Kim is not coming through the system. It must be on my end. All right, well, hold tight, everybody. We, we try to figure this out real quick. So we're going to go back to Miss Nina Taylor. Hold tight. Wrote for the play of the same. Galbraith eventually settled as worship pastor at Redemption, a church in Greenville, South Carolina. It was there that he recorded Lord, You Are Good, a part spoken testimony that hit the Billboard Gospel Songs chart and became a gospel digital song sales number one in the fall of 2016. Micah Paris, born in London, England. On April 27, 1969, she grew up singing in her grandparents' church, and in her mid-teens, she was making regular appearances with the Spirit of Watts Gospel Choir. She was soon noticed as a distinctive voice at the age of 17 when she got her break backing vocalists with the UK chart band Hollywood Beyond. The range, power, and sheer soulfulness of her singing made a major impact on the UK scene, and in the following year of 1988, she released her debut platinum-selling album, So Good, from which she had her first top 10 hit. This led to a collaboration with American soul singer Will Downing on a cover version of Where Is The Love. In 1991, Micah's second album, Contribution, was released. This extended Micah's soul and gospel influences to bring in hip-hop and house music. Her third album, Whisper a Prayer, in 1993, marked another departure from Micah fusing soul, jazz, and blues along with a lavished string of arrangement. This garnered her further top 20 singles like Never Felt Like This Before and Want to Hold On To You. Micah then decided to break from recording and return to the stage. Born on November 30th, 1924, Brooklyn, New York native, African-American congresswoman and politician, her name was Shirley Chisholm. All right, Kimmy Kim, can you hear me now? I can hear you. 
All right, that was on my end. You hear me? <laughs> I had you on mute, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, another sister. Yeah, I forgot I had put everybody on mute when I was doing some testing. So, what's going on? How you doing? I am great. I can't complain. It's a great Monday, and uh, it it feels good to be back with Batman on Monday night. And uh, how about you? Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, good Monday. Good Monday. Pretty busy day. You know, you know how Mondays are. You know, you chill all weekend and yeah, then everything just that. fall on you on Monday. But other than everything, everything is well. Well, well, well. But look, you got a great guest tonight. I'm excited to hear hear her journey. You excited? Ms. Oh, wow. Hargan. Yeah. I am. I look at her bio and I'm just amazed how young she is. When yeah. I was her age, I was doing things the opposite. I'm like, oh my goodness, she's in the Army and she's doing like, she had already written three books. I'm like, yeah, okay. yeah, young people are doing their thing. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. But yeah, they they stepping out there on faith. You know, you can't blame them. You know, all, yeah. every, all the resources is available now. Why not? You know? Absolutely. So yeah. I was very impressed. I went to her YouTube um, interview and then I went to her Facebook um, page. It was very, very interesting. Yeah. Very right. enlightening. That's right. Strong yeah. woman. Strong woman. I love that. That's young right. People. <laughs> That's right. And speaking of Warriors, we want to shout out to the NFL. They did a great job, uh, get, you know, making the league happen, you know, during this COVID pandemic period. Uh, they were able to get to the playoffs. We had some good games Saturday and Sunday. No no major injuries. Uh, the guys all were, were safe and sound. Everybody walked off the field. And um, it was it was great, great, great uh, weekend of sports. You know, we need this. Now, you who's know. your team again? The Baltimore Ravens. Who else? <laughs> That's right. That's I do right. like. I do enjoy watching your cor- your new quarterback. He is amazing. Yeah, yeah. he's a great job. Great job. Great great comeback. He uh he tore up all the narratives that were that was out there for a young guy. <laughs> it's, it's a shame they put he's so much pressure. Young. He's only been in the league for two years. Yeah, so, the, yeah. I, mean, I think is, he's going fabulous. Yeah, second full year, three years he's been in the league, yeah. but his second full year, third. Three years in a row, he made it to the playoffs, which is phenomenal. But you know how they right. they do stuff. You know, it's just that's your journal, your journalist, your journalism. <laughs> they got to find something. You know, absolutely. Yeah, but but they praising but, uh, them now. I'm watching also. I'm also watching my um, Bama yeah. taking in for another championship game. Yeah, that's on. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they was talking about that today. How unfair those those uh, you know college. You know, because they get all the best recruits, you know. So this, this, they've been having a long run of success, you know, pretty much like but the way you – Like USC. Remember years ago, USC used to dominate yeah. for, for decades. Now, you know, it's been Alabama. This is what it is. But keep in mind, it took them a minute to get here. It wasn't overnight. Yeah, but they've been, they've been having a good run so yeah. far. <laughs> Real good run. Yeah. All right. You ready to talk to our guests? She's I a, sure am. She's right. amazing. Well, let me I say hello wait. to Miss Mahogany. Here. Wait, welcome to Late Night with Jervis Live Worldwide and Kimmy Kim. How you doing? Hello. How are you? Great, great. Thank you for being on um, Late Night. Thank you for staying up late. Yeah. 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 Thank you. We had fun up in here. <laughs> That's right. We're looking forward to hearing your story. So I'm going to sit back and turn it over to Kimmy Kim. You guys have a great show. I'm right here. Okay. Well, wow, my sister, I was just amazed about your uh, journey for you to be so young. Who is Mahogany? Tell me more. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, Mahogany Clark. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm an author, a soldier, student, and I am a young lady, you know. So I'm just <laughs> living life, you know, following my passions. I'm 21 Ooh. years old from Miami, Florida. Oh. And oh, you're really young. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. I'm stationed in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. This okay. is my first duty station. I've been stationed here a little over two years. Um, I've been deployed for 11 months, came back, and, you know, um, I've just been using the Army as a stepping stone, you know, all the opportunities that they give me I do take up on such as education too of course and you know also being able to fund 
my passions, which is book mm. writing. <laughs> so that is so amazing. You said um, I need to do my bread and butter, and so allow my bread and butter to fund my passion. You have a purpose, girl. You know exactly where you're going. I'm going to be honest. When I was 21, <laughs> I was an opposite. <laughs> Remember, you, you had that interview with that one guy, uh, and you are telling him, that, well, while other people are out there partying, I'm getting my life together. I was like, girl, that's what I was <laughs> doing, and you're doing just the opposite of me. I'm so happy to hear that, that young people are doing their <laughs> thing. And I, I, I hear that you said that a writing is one of your passions. What kind of um, mm-hmm. writing do you enjoy doing? Is it more on a poetic style? Is it more of a inspirational, inspiring coaching? What are some of your um, writing styles that you enjoy? I would say a little bit of, um, well, a lot of poetry and a little bit of uh, inspirational, too. Because mm-hmm. I can sometimes write to, like, not only encourage myself, but it's something that I might feel like it can also encourage, you know, anyone else if they see this or, you know, if they're scrolling and they're looking for, like, a sign to, you know, get started in something that they probably always wanted to do or something like that, you know, like, somebody might see this and it might be like, you know, this might uplift them or this might encourage them. So, and then poetry is just more of, like, you know, that free mm-hmm. flow um, yeah. to release stress kind of thing, you know, get some, get some things off your chest. You know, you will. I enjoy both, and that's so amazing that you do both. Because honestly, it's like your um, the poetry side is more of a short uh, literature, and the inspiration more of a longer version. And it's amazing to see you as a young woman, you know, writing and you serving the country at the same time, and you know exactly what you want to do. I I uh, see. I really see that. Um, you will be that bestseller that you want to become. And I also uh, read in your bio that sometimes you tend to put um, other people first. And it's not, nothing wrong with that, and it's okay. But uh, mm-hmm. you remind me of a servant. How did you get to that point of, you know, serving others with all of your, you know, passion? Because it takes a servant to understand that once you are secure about yourself, you can now start serving. But still don't forget about yourself. How right. did you come to pass with this? Um, with that, I would just say that kind of probably came from like my childhood, you know, growing mm-hmm. up, how I grew up. Um, I always kind of felt for the people around me, such as my parents, you know, people that were raising me. So it's like I was one of those kids that could tell, <laughs> um, you know, something was wrong with dad or, you know, he, he's probably feeling down because he, uh, he can't afford to like do this right now or, mm. you know, something like that. I paid attention to things like that, you know, wow. when I was very young. So I always had like this way about me where I always kind of wanted to make my father smile in a way. So it was like, oh. it just kind of transpired. <laughs> over so sweet. And, you know, <laughs> that is so amazing. Like, yeah. So, <laughs> That is so amazing because I'm so sorry for cutting you off, but I just love that because you just said to me that you didn't, you don't have to wait until you're older to respect um, or to have the courage to encourage others. You don't have to be in your 30s or 40s to get your life back in, in order. You can start at a young age, and you're showing me that you can still have fun. Are you having fun? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, work hard, work hard, you know. And what's our I mean, I'm hobbies? just not really... Huh? Huh? I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm just not really, like, as far as on the internet with it, no. You know, because that's <laughs> just, like, you know, it's not... Why? Like, you know, that's free marketing <laughs> for you because, you know why? That's where some of your, the young people are. They're on, um, well, I still don't know all these platforms, but you can be an encourager to those who are, you know, going through because, unfortunately, they may not listen to someone like me because I'm a little bit older. I'm out of the uh, generation. You can inspire them. I would really, oh, I mean, I was, I was, yeah. <laughs> so would you say the reason why you don't want to do the Internet is because you prefer it to be more private, more so? What is the No, I'm, I'm on the Internet. 
like I'm all over okay. the internet marketing, but I'm talking about like okay. as far as like how the fun I'm having, I probably don't post that, you know. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, we need to <laughs> But I understand. It took me a minute to uh, really get to the social media net, uh, platform. Trust me, I do get it. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, you know. <laughs> That's fine. So tell me more about um, um, your wonderful books and um, give me a couple of your, I know you have three. Um, give me one of your, the one that is one of your favorites and I would love to have a synopsis on it. Like, what is it about and how did you come about to writing this wonderful book? Because I love to read and uh, I love reading good inspirational books and poetry. And I will be purchasing your book um, when I, you know, go to your uh, wonderful site. I just love the fact that you are writing at a 21-year-old. I said 24. You're a lot younger than 24. That's amazing. So <laughs> tell me about your project. Yes. Um, so at my first, my very first book is Self Love, and that that's what it's called. That was my poetry book. You know, that was the book I came out with because um, I felt like at the time I was 19 at the time, and as I said, well, as you read, you know, I have a hard time, like, choosing myself. So it's like, that's also like the flip side of being, a, I, um, as you said, a servant, because like, you know, it just becomes harder to be more selfish. You know, you can't be as selfish as the natural person can be. So, um, you know, I went through some things and basically I put them in, put it into poems and, um, you know, the poems all kind of related at the time. And I put them together and I put it into a book. So, because I, you know, I always knew I was writing. And then I was like, you know, this is something I would do no matter what was going on. Whether I got paid or not, I would wake up and I would write. So that's when I decided to take writing more seriously. And that's when I put, put it on the platform. And then out came self-love my very first book. And then um, my second book is called A Cup of Family Tea. That book is about (laughs) my childhood and, you know, some of the things that I went through. And and the book is meant to inspire people that you can choose your own path in life and also to, you know, look at, um, like, you know, how we were raised by our parents but sometimes our parents don't make the best decisions when it comes to how they, you know, raise us. But it's meant for, like, people to kind of look at the way that their parents might have been raised, you know. So it plays a lot with how they mm-hmm. raise you. Like sometimes it's not always just because they, they were born like that, you know. Like, nobody's born and they're just like, you know, I'm just going to be a negative person. Like, nobody, nobody is like exactly. that. Exactly. You know, it takes something. So it's happen. like they went through yeah. something and, you know, they didn't heal from it properly. So it just transpired. But it, it just basically encourages people to break the cycle and mm. also follow your own life. Like, just keep going. Regardless of what was handed to you, keep going in life. That's the second book. And then my third book, which is called Somebody Always Loves You. Oh, I mean, wow. You, love is a big thing for me. Um I'm one of my followers. I'm feeling in love, my sister. Come on. <laughs> yeah. That book encourages children or, you know, the younger, the youth, basically that somebody always loves them because mm. sometimes they're not, we're not always told that growing up. So it's basically giving them the insight to look at other people that's around them, you know, because we might be looking for love from the main two people in our life, which is our parents or mom and dad. You know, some people don't have a mom and dad. Some people don't know their mom and dad. Some people's mom and dad left them early, you know, whether they passed or they just didn't grow up with them. But you, it encourages them to look at the rest of their family members, their friends, a mentor. Wow. You know, let them know that somebody is always around that loves you regardless of if you feel like, you know, this person, I need this person to love me or I need this person to, you know, be there. And it just kind of encourages them that somebody always cares. 
regardless. Oh, <laughs> my goodness, my sister. You said a whole bunch in those three books because that is relevant not just to young people, even to some of the adults that are broken and they may never have that love feeling from their parents. I'm just right. so amazed about your book. Where can people find it? <laughs> well, yes, I know I can find it, but... Of those books are available on Amazon, all three of those books, all available on Amazon in ebook and in paperback. So if you want the ebook version, you can grab that for two ninety nine, or the paperback version that's six ninety nine, and then the children's book is fourteen ninety nine. And I also do like the Arthur's copies. So if people purchase Arthur's copies from me, I give them a free bookmark, or you know something of that nature to, you know, thank them, of course, for their support. And, you know, hopefully they enjoy my writings, of course. (laughs) So, Well, I'm going to revisit, like, a cup of family tea. Give me some (laughs) of your writings out of that book because, you know, family is important to me. I love the self-love. I always, somebody always love you. But a cup of family tea, that is, you know, that's mind-blowing, and it's, it, it it just highlighted um, to me the, the the principle of family and why family matters and in this right. pandemic it's really important that you have family because you know if you don't have family and family to me is not always someone that you find logically it could be your spiritual family it could be your college family it could just be someone that you bond with and it's not always biological. Please right. tell me something about that book. You know, I'm I'm just taken by that title, A Cup of Family Tea. That is <laughs> very different. Tell me more about that. Yes. Um, I knew you like that one. But <laughs> that one. <laughs> I felt that one. I was like, family tea. Family. You know, I love tea, too. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I feel like it was a catchy title. Um, that book is more of like a personal insight or when I, where I came from, you know, when people mm. see me, I'm more, like, giggly, more smiley, more positive and happy. So, like, nobody would Goofy really like me. me. Okay. Right. You're like me, then. I'm in my, I'm in my, uh, I'm in my little one. Okay. I'm goofy girl. Right. Even when I make a mistake, do you yeah. laugh at your mistakes, too? You laugh at your mistakes? Yeah, sometimes. Or yeah, sometimes yeah, I do. I well, I'm serious, <laughs> but I'm just like, oh, my goodness, how funny I did this. <laughs> That's me. I'm sorry. We got a lot in common. (laughs) So that, I think I developed that from probably on like through childhood. Like there's a lot of things that I just do that I don't even know why I do them. But like I started to realize like I laugh in a lot of different situations. I laugh when I'm nervous or Mm -hmm. I laugh to kind of like, it's just like, I like that feeling of feeling happy. Like, so I guess it's just, just does something for me so I, you know I laugh keep crying kind of thing so like I just, it's okay because it's laughter I'm you know what um you have this I mean you have wisdom already at 21 this you remind me of a mini David or well of course he's a guy but I'm just saying like your wisdom you are <laughs> you just have this joy in your in your spirit that it's not based on people, places, and things. And it's very encouraging to me because you're, you're 21, 21 years of age. And how, okay, please continue with the book. I'm just, I'm so amazed. Like, <laughs> you just, you are very impressive. Um, I'm impressed with your, your, um, your persona, how you carry yourself. I mean, you, I see nothing but greatness coming your way. I really do. But please tell me more. I want to know more about this family tea, and I will be purchasing that book for sure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so a couple family tea, I talk about, um, like, basically what I went through growing, growing up with my father. The very first poet, poem or, like, you know, slash, like, it, it was supposed to be poetry, but, like, it, it was, like, free flow <laughs> writing, so it kind of came out. <laughs> like different, like but a story. Title, yeah, <laughs> like a story. So, like the the title of the first one is called Motherless Child. So, because I didn't really wow. grow up with my mom, I was separated from her when I was about five. So, I was with my father for the rest of my time till I graduated and left off to basic training. So, I talk about some of the things I had to go through 
in the home with him. I talk about, I touched on things I went through with her too, but it was pretty brief, of course, because I wasn't necessarily raised by her. So, you know, um, and then I talk about some of the things I went through with my dad, watching how he carried on, you know, the different Mm -hmm. relationships he had, women kind of coming and going and, you know, the, the alcohol and verbal abuse and emotional abuse and like, you know, I just kind of wow. tap into that. And then um, I go into the book and I just talk about like, you know, how it was from young age all the way up until high school. And then I tell, I tell a story too about um, what happened right before I, I went off to basic training with, with our family. Uh, that's not me. They got a purchase. We don't, we don't want to give them yeah. everything. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, I got to purchase the book now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, girl, you you are inspirational. I mean, see, I mean, for you to get this joy, this unspeakable joy that is not based on what what you've been through or what your feelings are. Um, how did you come to this place? Because it is amazing. You, you have gone through. I'm gonna be honest. Um, having no mom in your life and still having this joy. It's amazing. And then how you just span your relationship with your dad and what you have to go through with him. That's just simply amazing. I mean, wow. So what got you to this point in knowing that no matter what I'm facing, I'm going to be all right? What was that um, that encouragement or that moment when you knew that no matter what you're facing, everything is going to be all right? What caused that? What what made that attitude to appear into your life that no matter what, I'm going to be all right? Because based on your, um, um, based on this conversation, you have gone through a lot for a a young person. How did you get to the point? Yeah. Um, hmm. (laughs) The point everything is going to be all right. Well, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm growing up. And up until this point, mm-hmm. it seems like I would go through a lot of, like, hard moments, but I always mm-hmm. came out stronger, and, you know, it always seemed to serve me, you know, even though at the time it was like, why do I have to go through this? <laughs> but, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> it seemed mm-hmm. to serve me later on. So it was like, I don't, you know, it's just, I just got that feeling like, like, you know, I think... No matter what, I'm always come out on top. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, and it's just like something's got to be keeping me, God or somebody, somebody. So, oh, God is definitely I'm keeping like. you, my sister, because He's yeah. showing to me that at 21, you have written three books. You know, I have met people my age who have not yet written in a book, <laughs> one book yet. <laughs> you are so. And inspiration to not only myself but to others, and knowing that no matter what I'm facing, no matter what my dark days are, no matter what my valley is, I'm going to be all right. It has to be the Lord. How did right. how did you meet the Lord? How did you meet God? I mean, it had to be because for you to have this joy, joy is not based on the world. Joy is based on that relationship that you have with God, and it sounds like to me that you have a strong relationship with God. So how did that come about? Actually, uh, well, yeah, I don't know how strong it is, but like, well, we well, have a relationship. Yeah. We all have, um, you know, we 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 growing in grace. We growing. We all growing. So. I do have <laughs> a, a praying, you know, like a praying grandmother, and mm-hmm. you know, a couple people in my family, they're prayer warriors. So I I could probably mm. say it comes from that. A lot of prayer, a lot of, you know, people, you know, just always speaking positivity or, you know, great things to come in your life no matter what is going on. When you don't when you mm-hmm. don't know it, when you're not seeing them, when you're not in front of them. Mm-hmm. So I just think it has a lot to do with that. And then, you know, I just actually have a big heart. So uh, yes. a lot of good things kind of come my way. <laughs> so, wow. But, you know. I do deal with like um, it's not always peaches and creams. 
I do deal with like anxiety or like um, having to program myself to be like a lot more positive, uh-huh. meaning like so like anytime something negative kind of drops in my mind, I have to like replace it with something positive or, you know, the positive outlook on it because everything has a positive outlook. So it kind of helps. That's like, that's kind of something that I do to kind of help with the anxiety to kind of calm down or, you know, just write um, different things like that. You can light some candles or light some essence. Then just kind of relax and then, you know, put on some. I like old school music, so that helps mm. to help me what, relax. So, what kind of you know, your? What are some of your favorite artists? Tell me some. <laughs> I like old school. As far as old, as far as old school, I listen to uh-huh. like Lady you said old school. Barry White, Marvin Gaye. Uh, oh wow, I'm that's like, really old school for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be taking it back. I love you so very right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can back. So that is really old school because I like the old school more so because of the substance. I try to listen to some of the music that my daughter and my other nephews are listening to and I asked them like, What where is the lyrics? What kind of inspirational Oh, we just you know, it's the beat. It's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Like, and I think that just comes from too. My dad, when he would, you know, have his nights, his nights, his moments, he'll play some old school music. Like, and it just, it just stuck with me. So that's just something that, that's why I got it from my baby. So, okay. And so, tell me something that you enjoy doing when you're not writing. What are some of your things that you enjoy? Because you know, sometimes even with your passion, there's times you must. You know, take a break and relax and revise. Oh, and well, what are some of your things you enjoy that? doing? Um, I actually like spending time, you know, with people I care about. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, we might go try something new. Um, like, we might go, like, I like go-kart riding. I like kind of doing, like, action things. Or if it's just me by myself, then, you know, I just kind of relax. I'm way more relaxed. When it's just me, I just kind of. Do not too much, you know, but and you're something. a homebody. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, you're a homebody as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, tell me your experience in the Army. I'm just amazed that you're in the Army serving the country, having this joy, writing books, traveling the world. You are living the best life. I mean, um, you're single, beautiful inside and out. Um, Tell me about the Army life. What is it like? The Army life, um, it, you know, it's challenging. It's something, something that it takes to get used to unless, of course, you just, you know, this is something you always wanted to do or something. But, like, if you're somebody like me, it's like it was a bit challenging. Like, because they, it, it's very, so, like, I could be a servant. But then, like, the Army is, like, a lot more demanding. So, like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you have to, like, it's like they come first. You know, they're kind of like a child or they're kind of like, you know, a husband or wife or something. But it's like they come above like that because, you know, you signed a contract. So there's that. And then I would say for a person that wants to be more stable, I mean, I'm not sure if unless you, like, go reserve as far as, active duty purposes, Mm -hmm. not necessarily Mm -hmm. because you move around. You'll move around every couple of years or you'll move around in general. Even when you're stationed somewhere, you might deploy, you know, for a a period of time and come back and then get ready to deploy again. Like, so, you know, it's just, it takes some getting used to and then dealing with the different personalities that you have to deal with because you deal with different people and Mm -hmm. you have many, many bosses. Because anyone that outranks you is considered your boss. Like, it's like the really, they know yeah, that. So it's, it's like you got many bosses. You probably don't even know them. Probably never met them, but simply because of the rank, you show them a certain amount of respect because that's right. just the way the they go. You know? mm-hmm. Even if you don't know them, it's just like this. Just how it is, you know. So it's you know it's not for everyone, but. If you want to make it a career, it's, it's 
um, definitely possible. You can definitely make it a career. Or if you just want to use it as a stepping stone, as I am, or something like that, then you definitely do that too. But it's not a terrible choice, but it's not for everyone. <laughs> That's what I would say. So at the end of the day, um, as you move in, into the older years in life, and I know you want to be nothing but great, I see nothing but greatness, what are some of your legacies that you would like to leave behind? Some legacies? Mm-hmm. What would you like your legacy to become? Like, what would you like for people to remember you as, as you're, you know, getting older and you're writing more books? And I could see you one day writing, like, a screenplay or a movie and, you know, having your you know, own um, motivation and speaking um, company. What would you like for your legacy to be? Ooh, I actually never thought about that. Um, <laughs> because yeah. the reason why I ask that is because how you live is how people will remember you when, you know, God calls you home. And so I tend to live every day as if today is like my last. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I just love to see like how people love to um, leave behind when it's their legacy. What kind of right. uh, remarks that you would like for people to remember you as. Right. So, I don't know, one thing I would like people to remember me for uh, is my heart. Um, mm-hmm. Even when I was, like, when I graduated, you know how you decorate your graduation cap? Um, <laughs> my graduation cap, it said heart of gold. And oh, wow. I'll never forget it. Like, I remember I put heart of gold and I had, like, the gold glitter on it. But, like, that's really what I see. That's really what I feel, you know, I have a heart of gold like it's just a heart that keeps on giving and you know mm-hmm. never really gets tired because oh wow you know I don't give because I look for something in return I give because giving actually makes me happy <laughs> so but, girl you know, oh my goodness yeah. you're amazing you're a giver too I mean you have mm-hmm. to you, you too. don't you know you just described to me the art of being a believer I mean, it has something to do how many times you go to church or how many times you pray. Of course, you want that relationship, but after that, it's like your lifestyle. You're telling me you're a giver, you give back, you love people, you're lovable in spite of your, you know, your beginnings, your humbling beginnings. And it's amazing to me that to see someone who is 21 years old, you have already written three books. (laughs) You're doing arm services, and uh, you're still you have more things to do. What are some of your things that like um, that you like to accomplish before a certain age? You know, some people say, "Oh, the five year goal." What is your five year goal plan? So um, right now, I am like taking a real estate course so that yeah. I can get into real estate, and I actually would within the next five years alongside of becoming, um, of course, a best-selling author or a larger author, I actually want to become, like, one of the top real estate agents, too, in North Carolina. Like, so I want to see how that goes. So I'm definitely looking forward to that goal, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. So real estate, I can see that investor spirit. And uh, who are some of your favorite authors? One, well, two, two of them are um, Rupai Kaur, I believe I said her name right. Uh, okay. She wrote Milk and Honey, and it was another one she wrote. Um, she's one, and then it's also also this author named Ken Denalis, but he's not a large author, but mm-hmm. um, like, I get a lot of encouragement from him in general. So, like, just watching how he moves through life and how he's always – you know, becoming greater, like, each day. So, uh, very inspired by him. So, those two authors, I would have to say. Okay. And your first children book, um, what inspired you to write a children book? What was the um, the core reason? Because um, it sounds like to me, for me, based on getting to know you on this wonderful platform at Jerry Warren, thank you, Jerry Warren, um, it sounds like to me you want to inspire people to 
no matter what you're facing in your childhood, that tomorrow would be a better day. So what inspired you to start writing for the younger generation? What was that motive behind it? That was because everything starts with a younger generation. Like Mm -hmm. the younger generation is the future and, you know, it all starts with them. It's all, it all starts with how they are nurtured because, you know, if you're not nurtured correctly, you take that into your future relationships that you're going to have with people as you get older. And, you know, the world just needs more nurtured or more, you know, more love, more care, mm-hmm. more, you know, like the yeah. way you attend to them, the way you teach them, you know, all of that matters because they're your future. You know, they're going to run the world one day and they're going to be leaders one day. They're going to be yeah. the people that take over everything that we're doing right now. So that is why I chose to actually do a children's book. So basically you're passing the torch or the baton so that you can leave you can uh, lead with by example, and then that person can see that, wow, Mahogany, Miss Hurd, she taught me a, a, a beautiful thing about it's okay to love even when you're going through your pain. That is so, um, that's a great uh, way to um, pass the, the, the baton or the torch is by um, exemplifying what it means to be a servant leader. And I see that at, you are a army a uh, professional, a uh, author, aspires to become in, a, in real estate. What else will there be uh, to come from you? Like what other things that are in diverse that you like to, you know, soar? Um, I definitely like to get into like the more visual side of things okay. as far as like what you were saying, making like a movie or like, you know, or like video <laughs> movies that kind of play out, play out my writing or, you know, um, even like acting or something like that. Like I like to branch out, you know, into the more visual side of things. Oh, wow. And you say you're from Miami, right? Yes, yeah, so I'm from Miami. Okay, so what was it like? You know, that's one of my favorite places to go to visit. I tell my friends, what happened in Miami stays in Miami. <laughs> I love that place. Wow. Uh, what was it like growing up in Miami? <laughs> I love that place. Mm-hmm. I love your food. I love the South Beach. Dog. <laughs> well, um, well, I grew up in the hood part of Miami, but okay. Miami, okay. <laughs> for me, okay. it was still, it was still, you know, home. It was like, it was, Fun, but this was back. This was back when I was younger. Now you know, it's, but like back when I was younger, it was cookouts. You know, we would get together. People would just kind of we'd just celebrate together. We'd just have fun, have a good time. You know, um, mm-hmm. it was more like family oriented. It was actually, I was like, those were the days. Like you know, you look forward to kind of seeing each other later on at the dance or like, you know, getting together later on at the game or something like that. So it was, it was like pretty fun. Um, I then, you know, I just never forget it because I met some dope people, some people that, some real people, mm-hmm. the people that actually care. And, you know, it was more home. I mean, it changed over time, of course, especially when I um, left there, when I left after middle school and I went, the high school in Broward County, which is not too far away, but you know, it was, it was, it wasn't bad at all because I wasn't really the type of like partying and stuff like that. So I was wow. like in band or like okay. I did band. That's what I was. I did band a lot. I did play some sports in middle school, but band was music was like the overall. You know, band I love music. music. Yeah, so. <laughs> I love music. I love any form of music from gospel to reggae to country to old school rap. You know, I'm still Tupac. Hey, don't judge me. I still listen to my Tupac. <laughs> but uh, I enjoy it all. So are you a, a, Mer- um, a Miami Hurricane fan or the Dolphins or do you follow sports? Um, I would say I'm a Miami Heat fan. Okay. <laughs> 
Which one, the uh, college or the professional? Professional. I, okay. Do you like the basketball? And do you um, do you follow any of the sports there? Or because I used to love when you guys had Way and um, Shaq there. That was one of my favorite times of Miami. And of course, I used to be a Dan Marino fan. <laughs> I used to love to see him play. But that was yeah, the one. I, it's amazing to see how people are like so faithful to Dolphins. It's crazy. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys were good back then. But right now, we're I'm, I'm praying for a miracle. But you guys have some good um, potential. You have good potential. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, we are getting better. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting better, but um, definitely a Miami Heat basketball fan. If anything, like I used to do follow sports, but you know Miami Heat. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, he was. It was definitely good. I enjoy every minute, especially then LeBron James came. You know, I'm, I'm sure those tickets were like super high. <laughs> I love James too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just having an over. You are an overall individual. I love talking, not just spiritually based, but also real life situations. I like to get to know um, my. You know, sister and my um, brothers, who we have the opportunity to meet um, on the podcast. And you are a very bright and and gracious person. I mean, for you to be, I'm just, I'm sorry, 21, you have no idea. I was not like, I was not straight like you are. You, you have this maturity of a 30 year old and you are, you are going in the right direction then. Um, based on, you know, the the brief um, moment we talk about your upbringing. I mean, you went through a lot. And to see this fire in you and writing three books and serving your country, what else um, can you, um, what, what kind of um, nuggets can you give to young people, you know? Because I really believe that, um, I, I still can do that, but sometimes the younger generation tends to, you know, um, you know, lean towards someone who's a lot younger because they may think I'm old school. What kind of nugget would you give someone who's going through something in their life and they want to know, is there anything better? Because your story is just, it could be a movie. It really could. Yeah, it could. People keep saying that, too. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, well, to someone that feels like, is there anything better? Of course, there's something better. There's always something better. Um, it's just about how you go about your life. You know, the life you choose, the choices you make, the people, the people that you surround yourself with is a very big thing. It's a very, very, very important um, task because you have to surround yourself with people that either care for you or, you know, they are above you in a way, but not really like above you, but, you know, they're at a level to where it's like they're going after what they want in life or they're creating and they're, you know, they're continuously growing. So you want somebody that's growing in life and you want someone, you want people that care about you as well. So so that way, the way when you surround yourself with people like that, you're going to bounce off of them. So it's it's like you can't surround – if you surround yourself with great people, it's no way that you won't become great, you know. It's no way because that's your influence. And, mm-hmm. you know, people can influence on you, as we saw growing up in school and all that good stuff. The people that surround you is a very, very big thing. You never know yeah. who you meet in life and what they can do for you at all. So, I just see that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I am so impressed with you. I love your story. I love what you are doing in your life. Um, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity. And before you go, where can people reach out to you? Because you may have someone that wants to reach out and they want you to, you know, do a one-on-one with them when it comes to, um, 
giving them some advice or they want to purchase your book because you have a lot of knowledge for your age. I'm just saying you do. And uh, please give us your contact information. Yes. Um, so my email is born to soar 81 at gmail.com. Which is B-O-R-N-T-O-S-O-A-R-8-1 at gmail.com. That's my email, and my mm-hmm. Instagram and my Twitter are both Mahogany Writes with a Z at the end, so M-A-H-O-G-A-N-Y-W-R-I-T-E-Z. That's both Instagram and Twitter, Mahogany Writes, and my Facebook is Mahogany Clark, <laughs> so M-A-H-O-G-A-N-Y-C-L-A-R-K. And that's oh, wow. how you can reach me. And and before um, Jerry comes back on, Mahogany was one of my favorite movies by Diana Ross. So I'm just going to let you know, you got a beautiful name. <laughs> when they, when that movie, did you ever watch that movie? I watched it, but I probably don't remember because it probably was so long ago. It's and I old. Didn't watch it's it. an old movie. Yeah, <laughs> Billy D. Williams was. Yeah, it's it's really old. Um, you can find probably it on uh, YouTube, but I love that movie, and you remind me of her in that movie, Driven, Hungry. She was just a, a, really a hungry um, artist, and um, that's how you remind me of her, because you're hungry, you're driven, you didn't allow anything to stop you from doing what God is calling you to do, and I just love your drive. So with that being said, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk with you, to fellowship with you, because fellowshipping is amazing, and I thank you so much for this opportunity. Yes, thank you so much as well, you know. (laughs) I'm glad I could, you know, do, well, you know, be a good, be of good conversation to you. you Well, you must, no, more than a conversation, you gave me advice, you gave me some information that, there are some good young people. You know, all you see when you are uh, these little things, oh, there's some good young people. Uh, you need to go <laughs> check out Mahogany Hurts. I mean, Hurts. And she is doing amazing work. You need to check out other people. There are some good young people behind the scenes. And I love that. Yeah. And I would love to see you more on uh, social media, but I'll wait until your comfort, comfort level is there. But. I see nothing but greatness in the future for you. I see you definitely. Um, <laughs> I could see you um, also again in your mat, your doctrine. You know, you you have an amazing story. You are so amazing. So, I just thank you so much, my young sister, my um, for the time, for the opportunity to get to know you. You definitely stand out, and um, I'm looking forward. Um, another conversation in the future if you have other projects. I'm sure Jerry Royce would love to have you back on because young people is what we do. We we love to honor young people That's right. on his platform and others. And so I'm going to bring my balls out. Um, Jerry Royce, Jerry, Jerry. That's right. You tell them <laughs> we love to support the young people and we're trying to encourage the, the old heads to support the young people. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah that's right but look you're right that movie on um, mahogany is an awesome movie you got it get it because it's a very inspirational movie it's, uh, diana ross stars in it she's a struggling uh fashion design student and she and she moves to rome and become famous and it's a lot of stuff goes on in the movie so you got to check it out it's actually it is on netflix and i believe you can find it on youtube as well at least the previews yeah, she reminds me of Diana Ross with yeah. her, you know, story, and she's mm-hmm. 21 years old. I'm like, 21? Yeah. <laughs> you, don't want to, you don't want to know what I was doing at 21. <laughs> you was in college. You were in college, <laughs> acting up. Yeah, yeah, definitely in college, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Acting up. Jerry, Jerry. Yeah, I feel you. All right, well, we appreciate having her here, sharing her life and I'm I'm sure everybody's excited about the book. So, uh, you know, people pick it up, pull it off of Amazon, just type in uh, Mahogany Clark, and then you can find her work. All right, Mahogany, any inspiration, any encouragement you want to leave the young people with? Any encouraging words? Uh, yes. I would say, mm, 
see. Okay, so <laughs> I would say no matter what you want to do in life, uh, I would say go for it. You know, regardless of what fears you might have or who might cast their fears onto you, if you see to it that you want to be, um, you know, a music artist or you want to be a TV star or you want to be the best top business person in the world or you want to be whatever you want to be in life, I would say shoot for the stars and definitely don't limit yourself. That's so right. Always right. think greater. That's right. Good words. Good words. All right, Kimmy, Kimmy, you ready to end the show? Close it out. I I am. And uh, I just want to thank you once again, Jerry Worth, for this platform. I love uh, hosting with you, co-hosting with you, and I thank you. And uh, um, my sister, do you mind closing mm-hmm. us out with, in prayer? In prayer? Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, you can give us the army prayer. <laughs> you got this. You got it. You got it. I got nothing but faith for you. <laughs> you got to work for you. We need you to pray, pray about my sister. I know you got it. So. Okay. All right. So, okay, I would like to just thank God for life and for, you know, um, putting me in the path of great people, you know, people that are very encouraging, people that um, want to encourage others just as I do. Um, I pray that, you know, this be a great year for everyone, 2021. I pray that everyone, you know, stays healthy, everyone stays protected. And, you know, I pray that everyone just, you know, is happy, able to spend time with their family, able to provide for their families and if they are in a hard time that they're able to get through that hard time together or if they are alone you know with the help of God of course and um, I just like to say also thank you guys for having me on your show and amen amen, amen. amen. See, you did it see Jerry yeah. she had it oh, yeah. she have it she mm-hmm. had that <laughs> That's right. Beautiful. That's beautiful. All right. Well, we out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank everybody for joining us right here on Positive Power with Double XI Christian Media, starring Kimmy Kim and a special guest, Mahogany Clark. Uh, keep her in prayer. Her she's in the military and she's uh, traveling the world trying to encourage others through her through her poetry and her and her motivational speaking. So keep her in prayer, close to God. And the angels. All right, everybody, we out of here. I'm Jerry Rose Loud Worldwide, and we are out of here. Take us out, robot. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Walsh Live, worldwide.